Now, long, long ago, most people really did believe in God. And some people still do. And I'm talking here about the basic primitive phenomenon of belief, like, for instance, the belief that Mount Everest exists. Just straight, ordinary, everyday, uncomplicated belief in a proposition. Now, you can believe that Mount Everest exists and not know a whole lot about Mount Everest. For us, Mount Everest exists. It's just one of these four peaks. Which one is it? I doubt if any of you can pick out the picture of Mount Everest from these four mountains, but that does not disqualify you from believing the proposition that Mount Everest exists. It's one of them, and you could still tell me a bit about Mount Everest, enough to convince me that you are, as it were, competent to believe that Mount Everest exists. That's ordinary, everyday, straight-up belief. You don't have to be able to pick Mount Everest out of a lineup necessarily, and you still, you, you know enough about it so that you know what you're talking about when you say that Mount Everest exists. Now, let's try another case. I can't even read this. Proposition Alpha, probably Herr and Son, Dogar, Yasar, or Ver, or something like that. Now, I haven't the faintest idea what this means, because it's in Turkish. But I believe it's true. <laughs> and the reason I believe it's true is that I went to a trusted Turkish colleague and said, Guven, please give me a sentence of Turkish. Do not tell me what it means, but just, I, it's got to be true. And so he gave me this sentence. And I'm happy to say that I, I've told people, if you know what it means, don't tell me. I want to keep using this example, and I want to be able to say truly, cross my heart, I haven't the faintest idea what this proposition means, but I would bet a large sum of money that it's true. Okay? Notice, I've got no, nothing up my sleeve. This isn't magic. This isn't supernatural. It's a very simple state of affairs. I've got somebody to give me a proposition that they warrant is true, and I think, I trust you, I'm going to believe you. Okay. Nothing special about that. Well, here's another proposition, proposition beta. E equals mc squared. How many of you believe that? Right. How many of you understand it? <laughs> uh -huh. I use this example, by the way. I gave a talk uh, about my book at, at Fermi Lab. <laughs> outside Chicago, to an audience of about 250 of the world's great physicists. <laughs> and as I put this up, I said, uh, you know, I don't think this example is going to work in this crowd. <laughs> I said, how many of you believe it? Now, all the hands went up. How many of you understand it? Of course, all the hands went up. But then, as they were sort of laughing about that, one of them stood up and said, yeah, the experimentalists think they understand it, but they don't really. <laughs> Now, do I believe alpha and beta? Well, I don't understand alpha at all. I semi-understand beta. I, I can make some basic algebraic manipulations. I couldn't derive it, really. I couldn't use it in any way. So I don't really qualify. But that's all right. Because I can do what we all do all the time, and that is we can pass the buck to the experts. I don't have to understand it, but there have to be people that really understand it. And this is, oddly enough, curiously enough, this is one of the great powers of language. One of the unsung powers of language is that you can use language to give yourself formulae that you can use without understanding them. You can. You'd, we do the believing, we leave the understanding to the experts. And this is, in fact, a very useful tactic. There are, there are scientists who use formulae in their work that they themselves really don't know how to derive, really don't know how to use, but they, there's, there's a sort of a chain of authority that they can trust so that they can use them with confidence. Compare that situation when science with religion, 
with religious formula even the experts claim not to understand. In fact, they make, they don't confess that they don't understand, they insist that they don't understand. They make a, a special marvelous glory of the fact that the central propositions of their faith are incomprehensible even to the experts. Now this is just bizarre. 